The cold winds blew on the snow on the ground. Chu Xiao let go of her horse's reins and looked up towards the sun. Tears streamed down on her face, onto her hair below. The heavy responsibilities exerted its weight on her shoulder. That day, her tears dried up. As she stood on the snowy ground, she felt like a kite with no thread. Even if she wanted to escape, she would not know where to go. Just like this, she stayed in Yanbei and resided in the area of Hui Hui Mountains for two years. Ultimately, Yan Shun succeeded in his motives. Under his power, the Xia Empire was oppressed by him. After Yuan Yu's death, the Yuan family tried to clear their names by disowning him. They did not bury his body in the family's mausoleum. However, despite this, they were still implicated. Their status in the elders' clan was heavily diminished. As Yuan Huai was shunned repeatedly, Yuan Mukang's efforts to salvage the situation by supporting the other side families proven fruitless as well. As Yuan Yu's direct superior, Prince Yuan Che was not spread either. The prince who had gone through a series of ups and downs was once again exiled to the remote north Eastern border to supervise a totally unnecessary military reconstruction project, ending his involvement in the Shia Empire's political scene. What was most unexpected was that the 14th prince Yan Yang formed an alliance with the Wei family. Under Wei Guang's support, Yan Yang became the inherent heir to the royal throne, earning the title as the King of Chao. Shue was promoted as well, as he assumed full control of the forest of Yamin Pass. Although the Shia Empire the strong under went force a of full Yan political they were unsettled. It was easy to spot that which they no longer well versed had the in the art of warfare. They once he was had. no match. Faced with the strong force of Yan Bei, they were unsettled. Although which way was well versed in the art of warfare, he was no match for Yan Shun. Coupled with the internal political disturbance in Xia, he had to adopt a more defensive stance towards the war. Over the past year, they had started to show sign of fatigue. However, despite this, Yan Shun did not dare to attack Xia recklessly. Towards the southwest of Helan Mountains, 
a new political force appeared under the everyone's eyes. No one knew the origin of the political force, nor the number of people they had. The only thing they knew was that the leader of this force named himself the King of Shanghai. From the merchants that passed by the scouts sent out to fish out information. Qinghai was a piece of land situated south of Helan Mountains and to the west of Chuiui Mountains. It was rumored to be a barren no man's land with a harsh climate. Wild beasts roamed the land devoid of any grass. Over 2000 years ago, prisoners from various empires were exiled to this place. It was known that none of the people who were dumped over there survived. They were either eaten alive by the beast or killed by mysterious illness. The phrase exiled to Singhai become an indirect slang that assumed the meaning of certain death. It was extreme to the point where people would rather die in West Meng than step foot in Singhai. Over the years, countless prisoners at Chui Ui Pass had committed suicide. However, a new political force was born out of the blue in the piece of land, which was ruled by venomous insects and wild beasts without a trace of human life. It was the 17th day of the 7th month in the year 778. 70,000 troops, personally led by Yan Shon, attacked the southern gates of Yamin Pass. As they were about to succeed, the enemy appeared out of the blue at the southwestern part of their real force. They were agile and seasoned in combat. Their movements were fast and ruthless. They sliced into the left side of Yan B's forces effortlessly, disrupting their formation. However, when Yan Shun made his way to back to retail, they had vanished into the thin air. It was not until a long time later that the scouts discovered that they were at Chui Ui Pass and that this man known as the King of Qinghai had taken control of that place. This was a horrible nightmare for Yan Bei. As Chui Ui Pass was situated near Helan Mountains west of the rivers, this meant that Yan Bei had another enemy to deal with, other than the people outside of Melin Pass. What was even worse was that Meilin Pass was in Yan Bei's hands, while Chui Ui Pass belonged to the king of Qinghai. 
Now we are seeing two politically powerful groups of people. They are going to defeat one another. What will be next? Thank you for staying with me and I am going to share it continuously. Stay with me, subscribe and like the video to support me. And to know the further story of Princess Ascent's season 